Anthony on Air podcast, quarantine day 4,723. What do we keep and what do we ditch moving forward for this hard hitting question? We bring in our panel of experts. Frankie sure. C and Jay Sab are here. Hello, people. I like we this list. You, you, well, that, you know, that was for the visual people. <laughs> to hell with those that downloaded this and uh, are listening to it. Um, <laughs> this uh, came from Zora. Uh, it's a Medium article. The keep list and the ditch list. What are we going to look like in society moving forward once we get out of quarantine? It is definitely something that a lot of people are talking about. Um, here's what they have on the ditch list. Shaking hands and hugging buffets and unnecessary meetings i feel like that is universally agreeable unnecessary meetings these are things that we could have gotten rid of we could have gotten rid of years ago yeah all these things yeah quarantine or not the friggin meetings like i think that might be the number one thing like besides people realizing oh i don't really need to go to work the i don't need a meeting for this altogether is like number one you know how much money we would save if half the population could work from home? A lot of oh, money. Definitely. I think it's more than money. I think it's time. To me, the time is the more valuable thing. You know, I know there's a lot of Insanity. cost. Insanity. I, yeah, I know there's a lot of costs associated with, with commuting, but time, that, that hour and a half that you save. I think we talked about this on, a, on an old podcast. Like, you could really, I would split the difference with my employer. I would be like, I'd be happy to work a nine hour day if net I'm doing an hour less that I could use for myself. If everybody on average has an hour commute to work, that's an hour to work and an hour coming back from work. If you split that with your employer, you're still coming out ahead. Yeah, that's a deal to me. I'll stay home. I'll work. I'm going to have to make that stupid commute in I, the subway. What a nightmare is the smell, the, the, the gross people. No, no offense, all you gross people out the there. The homeless <laughs> urine. It's the homeless urine that you just can't take. Homeless or not, there's urine everywhere. Oh, that homeless urine. Ugh. Oh, is it there... doesn't have to be homeless urine. This is something. That urine could have had a home. Well, <laughs> 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 this is something that non-New Yorkers, I don't know if they'll understand. Like, I don't even know if Boston or Washington, D.C. people can get this. But that first warm kind of summery Ugh. day when all the underlying urine and excretion that's been just puddling up in the subways starts to, like, bake a little bit. Oh, man, uh, that, that smell. It forms like a subway casserole. <laughs> it's just a just a mess of just disgusting smells. It the the big smells that I always run into it's poop, pee, and garbage. Oh, and cigarettes. Yeah. There's never flowers. No. There's never anything nice. You, you walk by and you go, "Oh, that's great." And it's, you know, you think you'd pass by like a bakery or something and you'd smell that. No, you get like the exhaust from the bakery. Exactly. You never get like the bake, the fresh baked muffin smell. You get the back end of the the oven that gives you like exhaust and bullshit smell. We should work. That's what you get. You know when you go to Disney World and you go down Main Street and it just smells like your dreams come true and cookies. Like we got to get the Disney people. Park. Yeah. Or her. Yeah. When you drive into Hershey, when you drive into that town, it smells like chocolate and wonderfulness. How do we not have that we figured out from New like York? That. Yeah, we should really not that. like duty pee and semen, right? <laughs> we should like get Yankee Candle Company on this. Janine, it felt like you added the, a you added one the in there smokers. that we we didn't have before. You added a third element into this. Well, it's just something that happened to me a couple of years ago. <laughs> no big deal. Not don't have to get into it. <laughs> well, now we gotta. Um, you know you, the story. What do you think about this, though? First of all, I, I find it hard. Here's what I learned about myself. I'm a hugger. I'm a I'm a shaker. I'm not like Joe Biden hugger, but I do like a good <laughs> like I won't I won't <laughs> over the shoulder massage anybody. That's not Who are you me. Hugging? But I like a good like, hey, how are you? A hug. I feel like when we see each other 
if we haven't seen each other in a while, there might be a hug taking place. If we see each other, like, uh, yeah, yeah, or a handshake. There's contact. It's one of those. It's a one arm hug. It's a hey, how you doing? Or something like that. Yeah, I might go over the top with the hand like that. I like to do that. I like a little pat on the. I like a little shake pat. You know, a little pat on the shoulder. Shake the hand. How you doing? How are you? How you doing? Yeah, I like to whack the arm a little bit. Let you know I'm in the building. You know, I'm here. I've arrived. (laughs) Well, we're going towards the uh, what's that the the movie uh, uh, demolition man. Where demolition they high man. Five each other. Yeah. Like this and then they go. That's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> Their hands meet like that and then they go like this. That was what's his name, Rob Schneider. That Aww. was Rob Schneider. Yeah, remember that? Back in the day when no, Rob Schneider. No, I just brought it up. When <laughs> shut up. <laughs> When Rob Schneider was getting every minor role available, like, is there a two line part? We'll get to get that to Rob with Schneider. With Stallone. Yeah. Yeah. What he is was that? In like two or three movies with Stallone by him alone. Right That's there. right. Judge Dredd, De- Demolition Man. He had like a little Stallone run there. Yeah. I don't know what his connection there was, but there's there was something weird. there. All right. We're making this awkward for Janine. She wants to leave. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, shaking hands and well, hugging. You're just bringing up great movies, so. Yeah, unnecessary meetings, that's very true. Let's talk about the workplace for a second. The modern workplace right now, especially in New York City, more so the city than Manhattan, is jam people into the tiniest little cubicle that you possibly can, put somebody right on top of them, right? Jam yep. everybody in together and get as many people. Get as, in, in Manhattan, the name of the game is maximize the real estate as much as you possibly can. Well, what they do is it's called open floor planning. Right. Right. And it's just cubicle after cubicle, just rows of them. And there's no high walls. Basically, uh, it's in my office, it's the same thing. The walls come up to about here on you, maybe about to your, like as you're sitting at your desk, the wall's about here. Yeah. That's, now, the, that's how high the cubicle wall is. You could actually see over them. I think that's going to go because if you are going to have people, this is why, again, it feels like the answer is just like, let's not have anybody, you know, if you Come don't, <laughs> yeah, if you don't need an office, the, don't, don't have an office because it feels like the future of this is you're really not going to be able to do that anymore, that you're going to have to cordon people off. Let's not even talk about the offices for a second or the desks. What about the common areas and your lunch spaces and your meeting rooms? Like those are all usually pretty tiny. It's one chair crammed up right next to the other one. And you're not going to be able to do that anymore. If we get to a place where you have to maintain six feet of distance between another person, you can't all cram 14 people into a tiny little conference room. Well, that's not going to be like that forever. I mean, the six foot thing is going to be the rest of our lives. I mean, it's not going to be the rest of our lives, but for the foreseeable future. I mean, you're talking about probably months on end of social distancing. Well, you can't do you. It's impossible to go on the subway and, and maintain six feet of distance. Yeah, there's no it's way. Impossible. There's no way. That is a good question. What the there, hell are they going to do with that? How are they going to make that work? You can't regulate that unless you have, I don't know, police on every car. Just, But you can't. There's no room. I'd like to give everybody hula hoops. You you pay your Metro <laughs> card, you get a hula hoop, and then you just got to stay out of people's hula hoop atmosphere. That's it. Yeah, that's at, it. At least we won't look ridiculous. So that's good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the subway is impossible, but common areas seem pretty difficult. There's a, a company in China where they've had to do the social distancing. They actually remodeled their office. And I wish I remembered which company it was. But they remodeled their office entirely and gave everybody their own desk with a rug that had a six foot diameter around it. So you knew physically where you could walk up to when you had to talk to somebody, which is phenomenal. Because I remember when I used to work in an office, I used to have people that would love to come right over the shoulder and talk with you over the shoulder you just can like just feel their warm alcoholic like a, breath like creepy joe they oh. like hang over you <laughs> what you're working on it you're sitting and you have to kind of lean away you're like get, just get off of me it is the worst okay it was so bad when i was at cbs fm we had we had cubicles but we had l-shaped cubicles so we had an l-shaped desk 
and most everybody had their computer like on the inside of the L, right? So that their back cool. was totally facing out. Not your old pal Ann. I had mine all the way on the end of the L so that I could be facing out towards people so that people couldn't creep up behind me and do the hate whole. That. I hated it so much. I hated it. It's one it of my so pet peeves, honestly. Oh, I If could I could not back myself it. up against the wall and put the desk in a U around me. Yes. So that people have to stay on the other side of the desk, kind of like I'm working at like a, like a fast food place or something where the counter separates us. Yes. That would be wow. ideal. I'm the same you way. You don't like humans, do you? I, no. I don't like people <laughs> hanging over me. I have yeah, no that's problem like, with oh. humans. See, I don't like being snuck up on. Like, ask my wife. Even in a restaurant, I have to have the. I have to sit on the side of the table that's facing the door. <laughs> like, I need to know. I gotta. I gotta just be like Dwight Schrute. I gotta be. Re I gotta be up and ready. You know, just with, in case. Just in case. Because a bear could attack at any minute. You, you never know. You just never know. <laughs> um, buffets. Should you know, should I, we have ever had buffets to begin with, though? If they're properly run, the only way I like buffets is if someone is serving the food. If someone, if you have to go in and grab the food yourself, that's no good. But if you have someone standing behind and dishing it out, I'll go for that. I don't know. Janine? Um, I like the idea of a lot of different foods, like tapas, but not buffets. The, the food usually is just mediocre anyway. I yeah, haven't found one that I actually liked. Janine yeah. brings up a good point, Frank. Can you name a buffet that you completely love? That's the thing. The only time I can't oh. name them, but if you go to like a party, like at a catered event or something, that's when the people are standing behind the tables serving the food. portions to you. Serving. Yeah. That's the kind of buffet I like. Still kind of disgusting, like though, because you don't have a sneeze guard in those scenarios, and you really should have a <laughs> sneeze guard. <laughs> Throw a sneeze guard in. That's fine. Or you have everything domed off, like with a clear dome, and then they, they kind of lift the dome, and, and they or give it to Or hike the buffet trays right back into the kitchen and just scoop it onto a friggin' plate like a normal person and send it out that way. How about that? <laughs> no, because then you can make multiple trips. You get seven plates in your arms. You're good to go. Yeah, that's true. I guess too. There's there are those family style restaurants like Carmine's and uh, oh yeah, it's true. You know all those places where they'll just bring a big one to the table and then all you just you're responsible for the the table, which is better. I mean, you're sharing germs with like six other people, but at least it's just six people and not the entire friggin' party that you're there with. There's also that or, exactly. And then I mean, the only thing is you have to everybody touches the same spoon, but you know, come on, we gotta. We're going to have to touch the same something at one point or another. I know, but these are things mm -hmm. that right now we could not do these things. You cannot do these things in society right now if you want to keep this no, infection rate true. down, you know? Yeah, I, no, right now you can't. I, I agree. You can't be around anybody right now. I mean, I don't really know if we should have had buffets ever to begin with. Like, if you think about all, like, you think about the great meals that you've had in your life. Buffets are nowhere near like when was the last time you were like that buffet was so tasty now and here's the other thing with buffets too you will go oh my god I'm so stuck you it's just more about quantity than quality when you get a buffet right. maybe but correct me if I'm wrong and feel free be honest I'm gonna be honest at my wife's 40th there was a buffet and the food was delicious it was a brunch thing Anthony you missed it um <laughs> But the was, food was delicious. I refused to go to buffets. That's why I didn't go. I was like, to hell with the whole thing. You didn't thing. even know it was a buffet. Maybe you did. I don't know. But it was um, good. I liked it. I enjoyed it. But when a buffet comes to mind, it's like a place that you yeah. go to for a buffet. Not that everybody thinks of like the buffet sizzling. style. Right. Yeah, no, right. no. Like everybody thinks of the huge restaurant with the buffet in the middle. That right. That's what I'm all thinking over. of. That's no good. We can't do that anymore. Exactly. But like, right. I think that's but if what they're have, talking about. But if you change that, you class it up a little bit, you have like chefs in the background serving everything for you so that people aren't reaching in, that would be good. I don't Maybe know. Maybe the, the food is behind a, 
a partition. You can't get to it. And the per- you have to hand your plate over. And they glop it on like you're in the army. You might as well just <laughs> sit down then. <laughs> you might as well just open my mouth and pour some coronavirus right. into it. Ooh, what about... Okay, you're sitting. Here's an idea. You're sitting at okay. your table. You're trying way too hard you, to keep the buffet. No, no, listen. This is a this is a twist on a buffet. <laughs> you are really this fighting for twist. the buffet. Go ahead. Different Let's style see. here, and I think I may have just invented something good. Okay. You you <laughs> you sit at a table. It's you and like five people, whatever. And they wheel around, like four or five trays on a cart, and then they they serve you. They keep going. They keep wheeling it around the, the whole place. It's like a moving buffet. Like, like a, a Brazilian mo- steakhouse, basically. No. Oh, I got a good name for that. How about this? How about because you, you like you have it on like a cart? You're gonna say something that already exists. Shut up. You're what if we call it? No, no, no. This doesn't <laughs> exist. I'm with you on the invention. You ready? We call it a Go COVID ahead. cart. You just get your COVID <laughs> cart wheeled right up next to your table. What part of it is COVID? And Tell they me. scoop fresh COVID right onto your right onto your what, what's on How there? Is Big that Z. Because it's still you're still. You know, it, it's yeah. moving the food around. Like, okay, what if the cart passes it's on me out? It's on a cart, and it's under domes, like a you know, like a human. And you you pick it up. Like, let's say it's let's say it's. Uh, when did you ever have a cart over you? No, not like a, like you treat the food like a human <laughs> would treat the food, not like an animal. So you would pick up the dome, you serve it, you put the dome back, you move on. I like to put a dome over. Kind of like the right Brazilian now. thing. But like a tray of like three or four things. I'll tell you what. Let's go with the let's go with the Brazilian steakhouse idea for a little while. I feel like they've found a way to do a buffet without really having a buffet. That is is, what I'm saying. And I get you're 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 trying to kind of what Frank is then trying to say here. I think if I can interpret this correctly, is you're trying to. I don't think you can. You're trying to you know, mold that idea a little farther saying like, take all the things out of the buffet and let the guys move them around the room too and serve, maybe serve exactly. everybody. I mean, it's exactly. an interesting then, concept or wait. we can just get rid of buffets altogether and be happy go. eating good, healthy but they're food. fun. <laughs> but Let's it's have about some fun quantity. with our food. Damn it. I what? wonder, right? I, I wonder this idea. What would you say, Janine? He's saying it's about quantity. So say you, the, Using and Frank's quality. idea, wouldn't you feel like a dick asking for more of those mashed potatoes? No, keep going, keep going, keep going. No, it's going to come around again. But that's true. You do have that freedom when you're just up there serving your own fat face. And when you put guys on it, this guy's going to be like, I can't believe this guy's calling me over for the mashed potatoes again. You right. tell him, listen, there's no judgment. I want three scoops of mashed potatoes. I don't want just one. And then he's going to say, gotta this ain't a buffet guy. Yeah, it is. It's a moving buffet. <laughs> I don't know. I also feel like buffets are generational things. Like I feel like 20 years ago, that was the thing. And whereas now I just don't think they're as popular as they once were. And I also don't, I don't think that the generation, our generation and the ones behind us are going to be like, Hey, let's, let's have buffets. Let's go out to the buffet. That feels like more. (laughs) It was like more of my grandmother's thing. Like, 30, 40 years ago. Does anybody ever does anybody ever say and get excited about let's go to the buffet? I feel like buffet is something you land on when you can't think of anything else. And even then, you're like, I don't know. All right. right. Did you know that the buffet originated in Sweden? Oh. I would have said France. Uh, it was based off the smorgasbord concept, Man. which uh, people don't call it. Sh- yeah, people don't call it that anymore. We're much more comfortable with buffet than smorgasbord. I say we change it back to smorgasbord. That's more fun. Um, <laughs> it incidentally. Let's go out to the smorgasbord. By the way, it incidentally debuted at the 1939 New York's World Fair. Isn't it amazing how much shit debuted during that World's Fair yeah, time, really? and that we still that still like survives till today if you ever watch one of those moment if you ever watch one of those uh carnival food shows that mark summers narrates like every food came from the the original new york world uh world's fair we gotta have another one of those things because there's there's a mark summers narrated needs to be highlighted out there oh (laughs) i thought you meant a mark a mark summers food show i didn't know 
we could always use another one of those. But what happened to Mark why, Summers? Let me check on him. Well, he hosts. He hosts stuff. He's around. Um, their offices are also they're also talking about installing one way lanes throughout the floors, similar to what's happening in supermarkets oh. right now. Nobody, where... but the problem is with that. I went to the supermarket today. There were, uh, you know, those rows and everything, but nobody pays attention to. Mm-mm. People they were going following up it. And down. They were following it by me. I went the other day, and they were following those rules. In fact, I was coming out of one, and a store employee was right behind me, and somebody went to go turn it in, and she went, "Uh, uh, uh, no, no, you got to go the other way." She stopped. Oh, him. really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Have you seen any Nobody incidents? Nobody was stopping anybody. Because I had a, I had a couple. I had somebody yell at somebody else. I didn't see it, but I heard it. I heard some guy screaming. It's the law now. You got to stay six feet away from me. He was screaming at this it's woman. It's the law. Yeah. It is um, not the law. It's not. But it's, it is it's generally the suggested regulation or whatever. I don't know what it is, but yeah. But no, I mean, I'm all for it. I think the lanes are, would be good, but I just haven't seen evidence that people are gonna unless. We're all used to it. I don't. I think the people that went today, I saw a lot of people just zigging and zagging up these aisles. And I mean, but just think about part. it, Frank. Like I've uh, like your office, right? I've seen your office. Like they're they're mm-hmm. they're not the biggest. Actually, it's, you got a huge office, but the hallways are not big or spacious by any means. You don't have six. And feet there's of one space. way around. There's one hallway. It's not like there's two hallways that has one direction and the other. It's yeah. one circular. But Please. you can't have people going. You can't have this anymore. You would literally have to have a one way around. Could you imagine trying to talk to Larry four feet away from you that way? You would be. You don't walk around. Larry's an idiot anyway. <laughs> Who the hell wants to talk to Larry? You got to go but, around the whole building. I have. There's a hallway at my office that has to be. It's like five feet wide, maybe. But, and it's long. It's like one right. side of a building. And I. What are you supposed to do? You turn the corner. You see someone coming. You got to walk back. Ba- basically See, i don't know how long this is gonna last i mean how, this I is the, these are the things that like even if you look at the phases of reopening social distancing is constant throughout i mean even really? i think even into phase three or if not phase three is the first time you lax the six feet separation deal but that's that's really what we're talking about i mean again i think think about the shkeev in in your average office the hallways the bathrooms the common areas, like especially all these new modern, like, you know, we work spaces where you could like sit on the beanbag chair and, you, you know, all those kinds of stuff. You can't have it anymore. Nope. I mean, or at least yeah, the way is- the way, you know, we're going to try and get out of this thing. You can't have it during that time period. That's the thing. We can't get back to normal until we solve all these things. A lot of issues. And everybody's out there screaming about just get reopening, reopening. But it's like. What about, you know, did We're you see ready. that we are not ready? Georgia is reopening. Well, some parts of the country are. Literally, there are some parts of this country that are staring at us going, what is wrong with these people? Because yeah. their what lives are they doing? haven't been yeah, impacted. Walk through whatsoever. Manhattan. I'll tell you what. I'll show you what's wrong with. Them. Well, but that's Manhattan. Though. Like even even Governor Cuomo is. St- if you look at his press conferences, he's starting to introduce the idea of like upstate is going to open way sooner before uh of course it is downstate but 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 this is an idea that he's had to like slowly introduce and throw out into the ether because people are going to be so pissed off when half the state is open and the other half is still closed for like six more months like people are going to lose their minds over that that's part of living in a huge city that's what you got to do is right it's the trade-off. I mean, you could live in a place where your nearest neighbor is a half mile away or 10 feet away. Yeah. But um, going back to what I was saying, in Georgia tomorrow, they're going to reopen salons and uh, nail places and hair places and all that stuff. And even President Trump was like, eh, it's too soon for that. And the yeah, governor exactly. of, of Georgia That's is like, you know, you're screwing up. The governor of Georgia is like, I don't care. <laughs> He's like, we're doing it. We're, and they're going to open it up. They're going to just open it up. Ugh. I mean, the way some people are handling I forget what country it was. I think it was Sweden, who, by the way, gave us the buffet thing to kill us all those years ago. Smorgasbord. The slow smorgasbord death. But I think in Sweden, they were like, yeah, we're not going to close anything. And there's this like theory. I forget. Like, they call it herd something. 
It's like, mm-hmm. her, have you heard it, Janine? It's like herd health or something like that. It basically ties into natural selection, which is like, if you don't have the uh, immune system to fight off coronavirus, then we kind of don't and want you, you. You should be dead. Anyway. Exactly. And you're left we don't need you. And screw you. Yeah, that's literally <laughs> yeah. how some places of the world are handling this virus. They're like, well, if you can't, you know, if grandma can't make it, maybe grandma shouldn't be here. And that's literally My grandma. What <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you know, let's see, grandma or going to the nail salon. Uh, so they're making the choice to go to the nail salon. Screw grandma. That's how some people. That's how I think Sweden literally is keeping everything open. I don't. I do not believe that Sweden has has closed down. I don't now, think like, that they did either. Again, like I don't it, know what their numbers are. You're talking about a place that's much smaller. Right, obviously has some tourism, but nothing compared to the tourism no. of, of the, the amount States. of people per square, you know, whatever. Is yeah, not like it is here. Yeah. So, so what? Uh, I don't know what their numbers. Is it? Did it hit Sweden pretty hard? Um. No, it hasn't. Six. They have so sixteen thousand confirmed cases. As of a lot. That's a lot, but as of right now, 16,000 confirmed cases, 2,021 deaths. Eek. That's a lot. That is a lot. That's a lot. What? Not in not they to Sweden, slow though. The hell down. Not in Sweden. They're kind of like, eh. Bye, yeah, Grandma. Bye, Grandma. <laughs> yeah. Boy, Grandma would have loved my nail job just now. She would find these spectacular. This was her favorite color. Yeah. Too bad. <laughs> she can't see it. <laughs> Why do you want me to paint your nails pink? You always get red. Well, my grandmother loved pink. She's no longer with us, so this is to honor her. Oh. Got to oh, keep it all rolling. I'm sorry, but there are just some stupid people in this world. Can I say that there are stupid people? You can um, say whatever you want. I just, you know, we got to look out for everyone, and this is a whole country being stupid. Not, not to mention a state where everybody else is following the rules, but one state has to be a jerk. Well, let's see how it goes. I mean, this is the thing with all of this stuff. You know, um, it, the proof's going to be in the pudding. It's all going to flesh out in the numbers, and we're going to see what's working and what's not working with uh, all of these things. Um, so that was the ditch list, according to this Medium article. The keep list would be staying connected to those we love, the slowdown and self-care, and the gratitude for essential workers. What's um, self-care? You know what like self care is. Right? Yeah, I don't Letting know. your hair. Oh, come on. <laughs> is there more self care in all th- in all of this? I mean, again, the hustle and bustle. I feel like I've spent that's more true. more time with my kids. I I feel like that's been a, a positive. You know, um, there there have been some positives. Yeah, it's a little less stressful, I guess. Right. I mean, depending on the kid thing. I mean. Yeah, the self care part. I mean, you're you're at home more often, so while you're at, while you're working, you could do home stuff it, and take care of yourself and put that face so mask on. You could yeah. do that. So I guess so. And and are we not connecting to more? I've spoken to my family way more now than I ever have. That's true. You know, mm-hmm. aunts and uncles and all that kind of stuff. So that's definitely happening for sure. So um, we'll zoom and stuff like that continue to be the the way we talk to everybody or will we I go back to visiting <laughs> i wonder i mean you talk about the the average Let's workplace just zoom right you, yes. you talk about the average workplace and and can they if they now have to put like let's talk about an office in manhattan if they have to and by the way have you ever been to a real estate office in manhattan they put people in lockers forget mm-hmm. cubicles they're in a locker because nobody they don't put they don't really bring clients to the office all that often you know Excuse yeah, me. I guess most of their work is out of office. I guess. Yeah, I'm not so really they're, sure about they're all jammed in there. And if they do have a spot, it's like the conference room or whatever. But, I mean, you're talking about all these places now having to expand. Like, if you want to reopen, if you want to get business back up and running, but you have to have six feet, you have to. This is according to the regulations to reopen. You have to have six feet of space between people. 
you're literally talking about saying half the people have to stay home this day and then half the people get right. to stay home the next day because there's no other way to do that. No, there isn't. I'm trying to think six feet. I mean, is there a place where there's like you're three feet apart from your, your coworker? I'm sure there is. In the office? I mean, if you have a desk, yeah, I guess you could be three feet apart. But I mean, six feet. Ten feet is a basketball hoop. Six feet. That's a, you know, that's a. So it's a length of a person laying a person. down. Yeah, yeah laying down. Yeah. That's a big space. A lot of these places are going to have to make like huge, huge adjustments. And I don't think people, you know, what's interesting there. We got, we got so con confined and quarantined and we just wanted out. And I don't think any of us really thought about, holy crap, the obstacles that are going to be in place to move forward and what that's going to entail. Like I was thinking about it just even with the two kids, like this is going to be a nightmare moving yeah, forward. Yeah, how's it going to work with school? I mean, these kids, yeah, they're not going to exactly. stay six feet apart from each other. <clears throat> no. I do not know how they're going to, and that's why people are like, well, are you going to, you're going to send the kids back to school before, but dude, the school, school's done. School is over. Forget it. Like you need, you need from now until September to figure out how to do this for schools. Because like you said, Four and five year olds and seven and eight year olds are not going to stay six feet apart from one another. They're always, you know, messing with each other. They're not going to. They're not staying six feet apart, there's especially just, in these crammed classrooms. There's just no way. There's just absolutely no way that that's going to happen. So that definitely needs to be figured out. But all the other mm -hmm. things of like everybody has to wear masks and you know oh. all this stuff. Mayor Bill De Blasio said that he doesn't want to cancel Fourth of July. He called Macy's. And they, besides getting him to sign up 15% off and save, get a credit card. Besides that, <laughs> Macy's said Friends that family. they want to, yeah, they want to, uh, they want to do the 4th of July thing too. How the hell are you going to do that? And by the way, it Wait, wasn't like, not? it wasn't like de Blasio was just like, Hey, let's just do it. He was literally like, can we do fireworks and will people still enjoy it? If they can just like look out the window of their apartment building. He was the I best. Think so he was my favorite part. He was like, "Can't people just look out the window of their apartment buildings and see the fireworks?" And I'm kind of like, "Have you been to most apartments in Manhattan? They're facing a friggin' brick wall or somebody else's right. apartment. <laughs> like, you don't really have the greatest views out of I'm your." Sorry, but I think 99% of people that watch the Macy's fireworks are watching it on TV. Am I wrong there? We Probably. watched it actually from Fam's uncle's place once. Yeah, we did. You're in that one percent, and that was very fun. Sorry, that was nice. You invited that year, Frank. I was not invited. I, I don't get invited <laughs> to things. No, <laughs> that was a long time ago. I want to say it's about ten years ago. Was it? Oh, okay. ago? I was going to say, was it thirty years ago? Because if it wasn't, mm -hmm. I should have been invited. <laughs> <laughs> no, my uncle lives in an apartment right off the West Side Highway. So that year, that year, the fireworks were on that side because they alternate what side of Manhattan they're on every single year. Uh, and that I was, see no problem with putting on fireworks. Why would that be an issue? Because 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 people are going to gather in crowds. How I are would you like to hope at that time you would you would hope can start to. I would agree. But if we're talking about I mean, if we're talking, you're talking about July 4th. Yeah, that's all. It's not that far away. How do you stop people from congregating in huge crowds? Well, when they did, when they do Fourth of July, they set up like grandstands and stuff like that for the fireworks. You don't do any of that. You don't rope off anything. You have people just. You, we're gonna do fireworks, but you gotta stay in your house. Or if you're on the street and you're looking, you gotta keep socially. You know, you gotta do social distance. I mean, we can you're put the, gonna... we could put faith in people. You're basically saying put faith in people. <laughs> we could do That's it. What I'm saying. Don't ever. We did it really. We we put faith in people that they would stay home, and I feel like it took a little while, but for the most part, everybody did it. Right, the curve yeah. is flattening and all that stuff. But that's working. So maybe we can roll the dice on that kind of thing again. I don't know. I do tend to think like we are a fly to to light when it comes to fireworks. We're all mouth open, looking up, oh, and we're gonna true. yeah, exactly, Janine. We're gonna however. Even However, though we've seen them how many times? Right? I, I know. I, there's like, going to be, gonna be a select amount of people that are actually going to leave their house to see this thing because it's going to be an event outside 
that people, I'd say most people aren't ready to go outside yet, you know, and go to well, an event. For instance, let's say us, and not every single year, it's always been different, but so, sometimes on occasion, we as friends get together for July 4th, and we'll be in a place mm -hmm. where there's fireworks, right? Are sure. we even going to do that? I mean, can you even do that? Can you even be at a place where you can have a backyard party barbecue thing? I don't That's think. My thing. Not That's until my they thing. tell us it's okay. I mean, and I don't know if we're going to be there for July 4th. It just, you know. It's going to be like Easter. You just got to do your own thing. You get on Zoom. Maybe you have your, you know, you, you, whoever's in your house, you do a, a dinner like that. And yeah, that's just how you're going to have to do it. I just like not. Easter was. Oh. It sucks. Was so unless sad. it's better. Unless it's dr drastically better by then. Fourth of yeah. July is one of my favorite holidays. So it's a good I one. don't like this. Um. The one cool thing, and I can finally drink. <laughs> I know you've been dying to get that drink on. This, this Poor Janine, first Fourth of July that need, I could drink. You don't need Fourth of July to drink. Oh, I know. Janine has been pregnant for thirty out of the as last thirty six months. Known her, I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she has been happened. pregnant. <laughs> So she hasn't. Poor thing. The poor thing's liver is in such good shape, and really, <laughs> right. Um, we talked about this on a on a former podcast as we wrap things up here that the Jones Beach Air Show was canceled, which I feel like is stupid. Um, and I don't know whose idea it was, but we were taught. We said like it's a fly. It's a flying thing. You can kind of do it. Now we find out, and President Trump announced this that the Blue Angels as well as the mm -hmm. Thunderbirds, they're going to be doing flyovers uh, over major cities over the next, I think, next couple week. of weeks. Yeah. Next Tuesday for around here. Well, it's next Tuesday for us here on the mm -hmm. island and in New York. I don't know what it's going to be <coughs> for wherever you're listening or watching from, but um, yeah, they're going to do, they're going to do flyovers, which I think that's, see, like, to me, like, that's, that's America to me. Like, all right. America. We can't do this, then we'll figure out something else to right. do. So again, I don't know if it's fireworks for us, but I could see this being an awesome like little Fourth of July thing, having the you know, having the Blue Angels do a flyover somewhere or do something like that, you know. True. Yeah, flyovers America. are fine. I mean, that's uh, the usual <laughs> air show is uh, Memorial Day weekend. Is that? It, but this is happening next week. Yeah, this is happening yeah. next week because they came up with the idea and it was so damn good that they were like, we cannot wait. <laughs> we can't push this off hey, look it. to a look major it. holiday. Right just week. do it. Now. Yeah, just do it right now. But think about this. And this is what I want everybody to take away from this podcast. When you think about what life was like on September 10th, 2001, right? We could never have a conversation on September 10th, 2001 about going through metal detectors to go into a sports arena. We could never have that conversation of you're going to have to take off your shoes and your belt if you want to get on an airplane. We could not <laughs> fathom that moment. And I feel like we are in a similar situation now where it's like we're here. We can. This is different from 9-11 because 9-11 nobody saw coming. But we can see this coming and we still can't even fathom what the world is going to be like like try and think it actually is kind of a fun thing to be in of trying to think about where are we <laughs> going to be and what is going to happen because we don't know yeah the difference the difference was that was almost instantaneous the change happened one day to the next and we had to all adjust right this is being stretched out and we're gradually changing and it's just a little harder to, i guess we're trying to get used to the changes and once someone makes a big change it's not as accepted because it's not as instantaneous. Do you know what I mean? I like know the, the, I know what you mean, but yeah. uh, but think about it from the point of view of like taking your shoes off on an airplane. You know what I mean? Like we can see, we kind of have an idea of what this is. Now things are going to change. We're going to find out. We're going to learn new things about COVID. All this cats are getting it now, right? We're going to learn new things about it all yeah. the time, right? Poor poor little cats. Hi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um the uh <clears throat> the um and now i lost my train of thought oh yeah like can, like can you predict like can you imagine going into a meeting and not shaking somebody's hands can you imagine going yeah. to see your mom and not giving her a hug 
you know, like That's it's different. It's so strange, though. But how is it different? It's not really that different. You're going to be able to hug your family. <clears throat> I don't think in the next in phases. I think one, people are talking about strangers that you don't have no contact with. You're not going to go up to like someone and hug, you know, like a, someone you're just meeting or someone you haven't seen in a few days. This is someone, you know, their whereabouts. <laughs> It's you know, true, but there's still health. there's still that danger in the asymptomatic people that are carriers. Yeah. That Frank, you, you're still gonna kiss your mother directly right on the mouth. Yeah, I've been meaning to talk to you about that anyway. Kiss your mother directly on the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but you well, some people actually do that though, so that's why. Yeah. Some I people mean, do kiss your mom on the mouth. I get it. <laughs> people kiss your mom on the mouth. I kiss both so, no, moms I do not on their kiss mouth. My parents on the mouth. That's that's weird. Um, but anyway, it, it's you could still th there's nothing stopping you from spreading this in June, th theoretically. Yeah, no, we're not. Nothing's going to get back to 100 percent normal for a long time until we're comfortable with this thing existing and us existing alongside of it. Um, so there has to be a vaccine and they're working on it. I, I heard that there was like a trial going on in Europe. Well, I, I think know. the testing and the tracing the will help. Yeah. That's what's super important is the testing. Because yes. if you know you don't have it, you know, or you know you're good and you're clean and everything like that, then you can go back into the workforce. Or if you've had it. Or I think that's it. what the most important thing is. They're trying to see who's had it. Right. So they can't get it again. So then they're okay to work. Well, they're talking about that sign. Is that true the case? Anymore. No, they don't, even, yes. they don't know for sure if it's that. that oh, well. If that's true, because again, things change every five minutes. I like, know, I know. You just yeah, don't viruses, know. Viruses, you could just get them again. It's, it's not like uh, it's either like the chicken pox or it's like the flu. You can get the flu a million times in your life, right? But, but you can't get the chicken pox more than once. And as we've seen Actually, with this, it affects. Go ahead, Janine. Chicken pox. Some people are immune to the chicken pox altogether. There are those people. I'm sure there's some people immune to. To coronavirus too, who, but we don't know anything yet. Right. I think I'm immune to coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, go outside. Yeah, go take a walk. Yeah, I think I can. I think I'll be all right. I'll be out. Go there. to the gas station without a pair of gloves. And a <laughs> I don't like touching things at the gas station to begin with. Forget about that. <laughs> Forget about that. Uh, there was this crazy story, and I'll, we'll just mention this to go. But the the some of the original team in in Wuhan. Um, which makes me think of Wu Tang Clan all the time now when I say that. The way you said it. Tang. Yeah. Wu Tang. Yeah. That. Um, the original doctors that were. So the original doctor that warned everybody about the coronavirus, he died from coronavirus relatively early in the process. Hmm. Hmm. Um, okay. The other doctors. That, by the way, that's that was the moment. That was my moment when I was mm -hmm. like. Okay, this is gonna get out of control, and this is gonna be a real problem. When that guy died, and he died in, I want to say before we were quarantined, he died way before. I think it was like late yeah. February, early March. There was two things. I had that, and then I had a crazy listener tell me that he knew somebody in the State Department, and blah blah blah. And I never believed those people, but everything that that person <laughs> said <laughs> was Came entirely true. true. Yeah, whole damn thing came true. Completely came Sometimes true. Sometimes the crazies hit the nail on the head. Yeah. So anyway, the two doctors that were nearest to the original doctor to find it, they their skin colors changed entirely. So there's my man right there in his original form. And then here he is. There you go. There he is uh, in a video just, uh, I think, a little while after that. It actually... The corona... Is that the COVID filter on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> Coming soon. That is good, Janine. So is that from the virus or the treatment? You know, that's a good does, question. Does his whole body turn the color? That's a good question. Um, it, it looks like it. It's hard to tell, too, again, because this is coming from China and they control... They control basically everything. everything. Here's the other doctor. It's weird that it's <coughs> happening to two people, though. That's the other strange part. Uh, here's the other doctor, and there he is. Yeah, they said that something was it, it, his liver 
it affected his liver, whatever it was, affected his liver, and that changed his skin color. So, yeah. So full disclosure. Was it this just is, these two people, or is it like a? This is just these two people. Happens. It's just these two people. But right. full disclosure, this is coming from the Daily Mail, which is not the most entirely ah. reputable source in the world. But then again, what source is these days? Um, That's true. Also, somebody Frank that you and I went to grammar school with, his wife has it, and she has it. It's affecting her heart more than her oh, no. lungs. Um. Yeah. Uh, which is the How other? So? The other odd. I don't know. They just they they they're finding now that in some people it's affecting their heart more than their lungs. Some people have even if they don't have the previous condition with it correct like Shit. like where the virus tends to kind of like really kill a person's lungs in this particular case it goes after the heart it's more attacking the heart than the lungs and i mean we've seen this where like some people say it's covid pneumonia you know versus just yeah. regular covid like there's all these you know so i just feel like we're so early in the game still and by the way i'm not opposed to getting the economy back together I feel like we can do it, but I just feel like we're still so early in this game that I, you know, there are people rushing to open up nail salons, and it's kind of like we still don't even know what the hell, you know. Yeah, get the economy on track, but you know, we'll kill a couple hundred thousand people. But, it, it's but like, again, like I do, I do also still really agree with these people that live in these places where it's like their numbers are so low, it doesn't, it's, it's ridiculous to yeah. keep these people in their but homes. But the reason the numbers are, are low. Is because we're taking these precautions. If the, if we if we didn't do any of this, you know how fast this thing would have spread. Agree, agree. But now that we now that all the by all accounts things are starting to come down, like in Detroit and New York, things are coming down. Doesn't mean that we're done. Doesn't mean that we're going to go out tomorrow or even. I still. I mean, I think we're going well into June. You know. Yeah, just because the numbers start going down, doesn't mean that they'll keep going down no Correct. matter what. Correct. But. Uh, that being said, there are areas of our country that are nowhere near affected. No. And can go they about... they don't have the people we have. They don't that's, have the people. That's the number one thing, too. They don't have the density. They can go right. about their regular sure. lives. They should They should go about their regular lives, you know? If they're yep. not touristy places, if it's whatever Idaho that there's, like, population 200 people... Right. And they're just living their lives in this small town, you know. But again, not tra that's the other thing. Then they travel somewhere. They go to Florida and they come back. Are they allowed to do that? Uh, that's why that's not. I said this a couple of I don't know when it was, but you can go back and there's tape of it. I really think that we are going to reopen to really reopen to really do the whole thing. You've got to kill travel. You got to do it. Yeah, Be because you can't have. You can't have people board. That's how these things. That's how this thing got here in the first place. It came it's true. on a plane, right? Mm -hmm. If we're stuck in our houses, it stands the reason that we should not be on planes flying to different countries. I agree. I don't even. I. I swear to God. I think that we should be closing down borders to states. You shouldn't. You know, if you're if yeah. you're in a great state, why the hell would you want? You know, like look at look at out west. What what's the major problem out west? Los Angeles, Las Vegas, right? Yeah, the big populated states. If you're areas. if you're Arizona, oh god, now I gotta Google and make sure I'm finding a state near Vegas. So at this no, that's true. That's where Arizona goes. If it's you're, right yeah, it's, they you, touch Nevada yeah. and Arizona. Touch. Thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks for not making fun of me. You're too. welcome. Um, but if you're Arizona, do you want anybody from Vegas coming over into your that's state? The thing. Hell no. And and if yeah, I can get you? if I can get to Vegas, by the way, once things reopen, you don't think people are gonna hop on a plane from New York and go to Vegas and party? To eat at that buffet? You Hell yeah. Sure they got them so. buffets over there. <laughs> Full though. circle, baby. Four ninety nine lobster <laughs> buffet. Who cares if it only has one deformed claw? It doesn't matter. The other one's just fine. <laughs> Wherever it is. It's amazing. <laughs> right. So mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I yeah, I think travel's got to get shut down for a while. It, it's that's the number one way this thing spreads. It's just people moving all around the country, moving all around the world, and just spreading it. That's how that's how this thing moves. That's how it got here, and that's how it spread. That's it. Yeah. 
Well, this wasn't one of the more funnier podcasts, but it certainly was nice to just talk Me-me. about things that are going on. <laughs> <laughs> what, what'd, you, what'd you get from the podcast? We're screwed. That's what I got. Let me save everybody 43 minutes. We're screwed. <laughs> We're not screwed. No, it'll be fine. Keep following the, the advice of the medical professionals and do what we're we're supposed to do and that's it i think the, it'll be the fine. right way down the sh- supermarket aisle right that's true yeah just follow the rules follow, follow the, rules. the rules people it's the law now damn it that guy <laughs> yes. was great the, <laughs> there's nothing better than just an aggravated senior it's at, the the, law. at the supermarket <sighs> just been I love when up people the... try to tell you what the law is yeah right I, yeah i love that it's so funny supermarket law <laughs> supermarket law um it's just it's you know i don't know for me it 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 took a while to sink in like governor cuomo like a week and a half ago was like i don't think we're ever getting back to normal i think there's going to be a new normal and i was kind of like that's dumb like of course we'll get back to normal and now yeah. i'm kind of <laughs> like nah, i think he was right i feel feels there's weird gotta be a new normal that that i agree with i mean we have to evolve i said it i think a few podcasts ago where this is a catalyst for us to push forward both technologically and socially, it's it's going to be, it's a it's a moment in history. It's a time changing moment in history. Uh, wow. it, it may well be. It, it may well be one of those one of those moments. I mean, when you think about it, when you think about anything else you do, like you know, when you start to clean the garage out, like that's kind of the moment when you decide if you're going to remodel shit. You know what I mean? Like if you, like when you're hitting the pause button on something, it's kind of like you know. You're like, all right, like when, when something floods in your house, like that's the time to remodel the kitchen. You know what I mean? Like when you have to hit yeah, pause, you're forced. you're forced to do it sometimes. And, and so maybe, maybe I just, this uh, is just a push, a push forward into the, into the next phase of how we live. I'm just really not looking forward to the reopening and the uncomfortability of being among someone coughs yeah. like, like 10 feet away yeah. and that person's treated like they have the plague i mean because when i was still going to work right <laughs> now we were all taking proper precautions at work and wiping things down and stuff that there was an added 45 minutes to my day uh, more <laughs> sometimes in disinfecting things and you know wiping everything down when i got home and you know there was like And it's still the same thing. Like when I go to the supermarket, like we're wiping everything down and like, that's not going to stop once things reopen. It's going to be, it's not like, Hey, we reopen safe again. Yeah. It's not like, Hey, we reopened more people are flooding the stores. Now you don't have to wipe down your stuff when you bring it. Like you're still going to have to do that. Once people feel a hundred percent safe again, then we'll be able to get back to some kind of uh, reality that we were used to before. But most things are going to evolve into something new. Well, and the thing is, too, is yeah. what the doctors are saying is, is once you're the probably the amount of time it takes to get to that, like welcome to fall where you're smack back into people getting sick again season. Like that's that's the issue. By the way, so, next time we yeah. do a podcast, Frank, don't wear the same shirt that I'm wearing because this whole I just noticed how off balance this whole thing is. I or did that least- perp- you left the camera on. I saw what shirt you were wearing and I said, you know what? At least Let's let Janine know so she can join the group and be a whole part right. of it. She's sitting over there well, in her peach colored sweater. Fair, like <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, every shirt I wear is like it's got something on it, like uh, Star Wars or Metallica or something. I know. Uh, and then I'm, I'm, no, I'm no, made fun of slightly. <laughs> so this time I, this time I go with the plainest shirt I can get. Right. And it's still not good. enough. I'm just uncomfortable. Bet you it's a Metallica shirt inside out. That's it. Now not. let me ask you. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, was it has there a, a little pocket though? Was there a Wookie <laughs> on that shirt at one point that just kind of faded over the years and you just kept it going? Well, you know what's funny? Before this podcast, I was on a uh, uh, Zoom meeting with my company, mm-hmm. and there was like forty or fifty people in this meeting, and I was Oof. wearing a Chewbacca shirt, and I changed into this for that meeting. And I just didn't change back into the Chewbacca shirt. Oh, I see. So you were embarrassed to wear the Chewbacca shirt for the meeting. Yeah, but for you assholes, I don't care. 
Okay. You know what's weird? They're doing and by the NFL... assholes. I mean these two. They're doing <laughs> not, the pe- not the people listening. They're doing the NFL draft tonight, and they told all the guy they sent they sent cameras to the homes of all the mm-hmm. players that could be drafted, which really sucks because if you're like in that. 29 to 30 to 30. There's only 32 teams. There's only one round tonight. So you could be sitting there with a camera on you the whole night and you don't get drafted, which totally sucks. But they told all the players, do not wear a suit. Like they gave them like a specific dress code to wear. But yeah, they don't want them in T-shirts and they also don't want them like dressed up like in a suit because they thought that that would be uncomfortable for people to see like people dress up (laughs) in their homes in a suit. Isn't that weird? Do they get to put on whatever, I guess not, whatever jersey? Maybe there's like a filter they could put on. Like when they get drafted, the jersey goes on them. I think they can put fake backgrounds in, so I think they're going to be doing that. But, yeah, I wonder the same thing. Like I wonder if they sent 32 hats out because they got a whole package. Oh, you they you got... know what they could do is they wear like a green or a blue shirt, and they could just green screen a jersey on the, the jersey person. on them. I guess they could. Oh, yeah. I guess they could. Well, they got people that are photoshopping. I'm sure they'll be there to photoshop their their faces right away into the whatever. But yeah. All right. Any final thoughts? Janine. Well, this has been a depressing call. Um, <laughs> so I'm definitely going to go drink something right now. <laughs> um, final thoughts. I just hope we get back to normal. Yeah. Sooner rather than later. I just don't know. I don't know what that is. Feels weird. It's can never we, gonna be the same again. It's can gonna we be say, different. But we'll we'll get used to it. Can we say things are normal when you're like, How was work, honey? Well it was horrible. I was going the wrong way down the down the hallway and I got yelled at. I lost a vacation <laughs> day because uh I didn't realize I was walking the wrong way. I was walking the wrong right. way. <laughs> Frank, you see any last thoughts? Well, keep your chin up, everybody. We're here. We're not going anywhere. We'll be here to, to talk to you guys. And and hopefully soon, I would like to do one day in the future, another live one. That was a lot of fun. Uh, another live podcast. Oh, if, yeah. We if were, people want it. Maybe Friday. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe next podcast. Whatever maybe. you want to do, I'm in. For my final thought, I'm going to make the next podcast funny again. That's what I want to do. I want to make this podcast make funny podcasts again. funny again. Yeah. Well, not all of them, but this one for sure. All right. Thank you, guys. MPFA. <laughs> Let's get hats. We'll Photoshop hats for the next episode. 